launch of the stem cell transplant in the United States was actually kind of linked to the uh, uh, presidency of President Bush, who suddenly in the year 2001, as one of the first you know, declarations of his presidency, he said, I shall provide financing for stem cell research, federal financing, okay. And so at the beginning, there was a lot of action here. In August of 2001, the National Institute of Health launched a big activity. They published a book about the subject and it was all over the television and so on and so forth. Everybody was preparing for the big activity in the United States. Regretfully, then comes 9-11-2001 and total silence thereafter. There was not a single word from President Bush or anybody else about, about stem cell transplantation. And as you uh, remember, uh, he was uh, standardly blocking any possibility to pass any law through Congress dealing with you know, uh, stem cell research. So stem cell research was born, stem cell and at the same time died. But, but the publications from the United States kept on coming out. You know? They were not talking about any, anything smart or anything really uh, truly provable. But it was happening all the time, and the world to this date is convinced that you have to use embryonic stem cell transplantation, and you know, and you have, must use human embryonic stem cell transplantation. And you must realize that the when you speak about the world, you cannot blame the uh, people outside of Europe, because Asian continent in its entirety has never heard of such a thing as stem cell transplantation or cell transplantation or cell and therapy. Yeah, I have to be, uh, you know, state that in the year 2006, I was the first physician that actually lectured in the entire Asia about this subject. And I was the first lecturer, you know, and I, I had multiple lectures in India, China, including Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, Indonesia, uh, uh, Thailand, Australia, uh, Kuwait, and, you know, so in other words, I, be, I became a, a, I'm a rather, a rather big celebrity in uh, Asia. But in terms of the, you know, I, I don't want to, uh, I never said what I'm going to uh, say today. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that I was always facing the, the, uh, the probably uh, silly questions from the audience. They were asking me the issues which I did not agree with, you know. And I had a very hard time always to kind of, you know, cover it up that there is a discrepancy of opinion of mine and the, and the uh, and entire U.S., you know, uh, medical science field. Okay. But then, you know, in this year, a new campaign started in the uh, U.S. media under the title of Stem Cell Transplantation is a Hoax of 21st Century. Uh, the question is, I don't know who suddenly, you know, came to this, uh, you know, was able to uh, commit such a tremendous funds, you know, spread this word around that, you know, that suddenly, which was American discovery, uh, you know, 12 years later, is, de is declared hoax of the 21st century. Uh, you know, to me, it very much sounds like the, uh, you know, same group that launched the stem cell transplantation uh, story in the year 2000, and, and who was also maybe responsible for the ban of the German cell therapy in 1956. Uh, now, uh, the Fraud, however, in the meantime, has reached such a proportion that uh, in the last three, four months, and you can check this out on the internet, US FDA suddenly stepped in and um, put a stop to this fraud. Because, you see, among these um, you know, various forms of uh, cell therapy, which fraudulently you know, became uh, you know, spread throughout the world, was such a thing as adult autologous stem cell transplantation meaning taking you know, cells from patients on body, processing it, and then re-implanting it. And this was supposed to be like the future, you know, future of, this, of this therapeutic method. Regretfully, you know, there is, everything is beautiful about it. It, is, uh, it works, can be done, has been done, but it doesn't do anything. It has no therapeutic effect. So, and, and, and since so many clinics suddenly popped up all over the United States, and you know, offering this treatment for not small sums of money, okay, no, from insofar I'm concerned, it was a fraud. Even I say it's a fraud, you know. Now, the latest thing was uh, the, the plastic surgeons uh, in South Korea launched the, uh, you know, uh, idea of taking the fatty tissue con obtained during liposuction 
again processing in two and a half hours by some fancy machine, which you know is costs about hundred or hundred fifty thousand dollars, depending where you're coming from. And those cells are now re-implanted because those fatty cells that were extracted from the body suddenly were declared fatty cells, uh, uh, fatty stem cells, which allegedly do everything like a, like a stem cells will do. You know, which of course is a hoax. It absolutely you know has never worked cannot possibly work, as I will explain later. Okay, so the FDA was very quite uh, correct that finally stepped in. You know, the point is that if, if the situation would not be, have been very favorable, it would not have ever started. So in other words, somebody kicked it off and now suddenly closed it down, okay. Which both were uh, not very appropriate, you know, uh, points now. But I'm giving her several pointers about the practical advice. Uh, number one, if a physician or salesman shows you a vial with colored water, that vial will not contain any live cells. I guarantee you that. Cells can be seen with naked normal eyes since they are usually stuck together as clusters. So if, if you don't need to have a magnification just to look at the inner vial to see that there is something which looks like cells, you know, inside, okay. Number two, if somebody show you, shows you a vintage vials covered with dust, you know, and, uh, and, and uh, cobwebs, you know, that contains a beige powder, okay, don't believe that this uh, stuff inside are cells because the cells don't look like a powder, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, if somebody shows you a vial with frozen cells, you must ask a question. How are these frozen cells, you know, um, how they gotten in there, you know? Were they uh, frozen by a quick freezing, by throwing it, you know, into the freezer with liquid nitrogen? Or is it going to be done like in infertility clinics? when they are freezing, you know, the sperm or the, or the eggs, by so-called computerized phrasing, when the phrasing is done slowly, slowly, step by step, step by step, you know, uh, one degree of, of, of Celsius, you know, per minute or something of that sort. Now, uh, the survival of cells which uh, where the computerized phrasing is uh, used uh, is minimal. And uh, even was the situation is if the thawing of those cells before they are used, will be done without that com computerization. Then, you know, as, uh, including as uh, our testing, the, uh, only about 5% of those cells will survive. Meaning that you are injecting to the patient something which is, you know, dead, you know, dead uh, debris, you know, it cannot be called any, any, anything. And as a result of it, number one, there will be no therapeutic effect. And number two, yes, indeed, there will be allergic reactions. Because the dead, you know, that dead material is uh, of course, for, very foreign to our body, and the body has to react with, uh, like that. Okay, so the frozen cells, you know, uh, is 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 a tremendous is tremendous uh, uh, enigma. You know, now it, it is known to us that uh, in Orange County, uh, this happened, you know, a few months ago, uh, a person was sent to Europe to pick up frozen cells, which are the only place they are being made are in Germany, and. Uh, took them through U.S. Customs with the claim that they are nutritional supplements. And the U.S. Customs officer, even after cancer with FDA, he bought it. So these cells, you know, came through, of course. But naturally, by the time the, the cells actually landed, you know, in Orange County, they were defrosted. You can imagine, you know, what they were. They were rotten, you know. And, you know, one only has to hope that, the, uh, that it, they were not used for an Im implantation which entirely uh, possible, the sum of money allegedly which was in that luggage was worth $200,000. It is also uh, another adv advice to always investigate if you would look into this um, uh, idea of getting cell transplantation treatment for yourself or for somebody else. Uh, what exactly is the method of preparation? I will tell you that uh, there was a time we organized a project in the People's Republic of China uh, by, by their invitation. And uh, uh, in uh, winter of 2000, I, I gave many lectures and many all day long seminars throughout China, in Beijing, Shanghai, you know, Guangzhou and uh, many other locations. Uh, of these lectures, one was very important. In the winter of 2007, I lectured in Beijing to a group of truly, uh, you know, Chinese medical elite, okay. Uh, one of the people present there was a, uh, some high officer of Chinese FDA. 
who actually you know praised me very much and uh, and in in, in in the Q and A you know uh, portion because said I finally now I understand what this stem cell transplantation is all about and I you just came at the very correct time because our government just made a decision that they are going to ban stem cell transplantation reason because they are sick and tired of all the scandals the scandal after scandal after scandal and now I see why the, why all the scandal so I think that I might have been you know a historical figure that I prevented the ban to, to take place but they, they, they did close out many many clinics in the hospitals where they're practicing it uh, and, and straighten out the situation okay now the man the man that actually was responsible for inviting me was uh, you know is uh, retired very big general, you know, uh, very, very much important in the mo uh, ma modern history of China, and actually was our very first patient in China. Okay, now, uh, subsequent to this, I made a suggestion to this, um, you know, big general that how about if we would start to do the uh, preparation of cells in China, okay, rather than, you know, bringing them from Europe, as we always do. And he said, oh, no, sir. Our elite would never allow implantation of cells in their bodies if they would be made in China. They would never trust it. You just keep on making them in Europe and bring, in, bring them in by the courier you know, uh, uh, to China and that way it's going to work. We would never trust it. Okay? And needless to say, one year earlier I already made a proposal somewhere else. It was in the country of Indonesia. Okay? Uh, Indonesia is a very, you know, economically strong country, you know, it has 250 million people and so on and so forth. And in Indonesia, I, we had very many VIP patients from the very first day and these people told me, oh no, you cannot make cells in Indonesia, even if you would make them yourselves, yourself, because we would not trust it. And this, this was a group of people who were actually, all our patients, all from that, uh, you know, uh, VIP elite of the country, you see. Say